Just push the damn door. Push. You got this. You got this. Come on. You can lead a water to fish. I mean, wait, what the fuck? You can, <clears throat> excuse me, you can lead a horse to drink, but you can't make him fish. Wait. Ah, fuck it. Just push the damn door. I just gave up. <clears throat> really. Are you really that challenged? Huh? Are you really that challenged? Did you eat lead paint chips when you were a kid? Hmm? Shit. Have you been gnawing on our woodwork? Damn it. I knew I should have had the house updated. Anywho. Today's the day. I just got a nice, ginormous shipment from Mauser. And, um... Yeah, baby. Get all these parts. Uh, don't worry. There, this is what you call, um, uh, what's the word? Um, controlled chaos. It looks like there's a, it looks like I don't know what the hell's going on here. I, I do. I got two radios here on the bench. Um, for two very similar problems. So, what we've got here is, um, faulty capacitors. And what's happening is, I believe, because I'm seeing low voltage on the, um, so there's two backlighting circuits on the Pioneer sensory sound system head unit. And <clears throat> one is powered on when the vehicle lighting is turned on. The other one is powered on independently of the vehicle lighting. And it's powered on when the unit is active. So when either, when either uh, function is selected, CD, FM, AM, et cetera, et cetera. So <clears throat> what's happening is I'm only getting seven volts out of the, um, the uh, display panel uh, backlighting, which is the LCD panels. Seven volts is producing a very weak light out of those uh, little incandescence it's not enough light it's very very dim and uh, upon further inspection i found that the capacitors on the power supply board especially this guy right here look at this thing completely blown so we've ordered all new capacitors for this power supply board we're going to swap those out and uh, we're going to hopefully fix the lighting problem that this thing has now, in other news, I've got this Panasonic exact model. I don't know offhand. Uh, this is the one that was sent to me by a different person. This guy's from, I think, Washington. Uh, let's see. Ohio. <clears throat> yeah, this thing's from Ohio. And, um, well... The CD player is not working and the cassette deck isn't working. Everything else seems to be okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to start um, with a recap. Now, I tried to raise the power on the CD lens, and what I found was it didn't help anything. But the, um, the, the spindle motor will not run at the proper speed. It will not turn on on its own. And... Uh, it's, it's got issues. So, uh, we're swapping out all of the electrolytics on the CD mechanism board on a hunch. Now, I've seen these capacitors used in just about every piece of consumer electronics from the early 90s and on. These little metal cans right here. And we all, anyone who uh, collects vintage Macintoshes knows damn well where I'm going with this. These are always the problem. Anytime you get a vintage Mac, an LC2, LC3, Classic, Classic 1, Classic 2, whatever. Doesn't matter what model, even all the way up into the Performas, the 575s, every freaking vintage Mac I've ever come across 
with any level of malfunctionness. So literally every vintage Mac I have ever come across from the early 90s to the late 90s that's had any level of malfunction, um, it's always the goddamn caps. So we're going to go ahead, and they're not expensive. They're easy to replace. We're going to just change them all out because we can. Now I'm only going to do like one or two of these on camera, and then I'm going to go ahead and just stop filming because... This is like watching paint dry. So we're gonna we're gonna take a couple of these out and uh, we're gonna make lemons out of lemonade. So one of the things I do when I do a recap is I mark off all the old ones because sometimes it you you might start second guessing yourself. Did I change that one or not? Well, I'm gonna do that. We're gonna put a dab of. A little dollop of, um, so what do we need? Six volt 100s. There should be some in here. Pretty sure I ordered them. 100, six, uh oh. All right, so rather than buy six volt 100 microfarad caps, I bought, I actually already had some of these 110s. You can go up in the voltage. You just want to keep the capacitance. You don't want to go below spec. That's, that was the rule I was taught. I just realized I've been filming and most of the, uh, the workspace has been blocked. So we're going to have to do one more. All right, so let's do a cap. All right, so I've already done these two. And now we're going to go to the other side of the board. So I've marked them all off in pink, as I said earlier. And uh, so let's do these 25-22s. So we got a bunch of these. I can't substitute. I cannot substitute the uh, 33 for a 25. I probably could, but uh, I don't think that would be a good thing. Um, I, I'm pretty sure that would cause problems uh, in the matrix. So let me grab my. Um, I need a. I need a different. I need to organize my life here. Oh, there they are. Okay. I might have something in the parts bin I could use to substitute. So we don't even need the desoldering breed. We just heat up one side, lift it a little bit, do the other side, lift it a little bit, do the other side, lift it, and so on. I have to heat up a little bit high on this one because I'm doing this at 700 degrees. It's a little much, but it heats faster that way. And I think they used lead free solder. This stuff doesn't melt like lead solder does. So, I don't know when the transition began. I'll have to look into that. But this was made in 1990, and I think by 1990 they were already doing lead-free in some applications. So, that might be why. Okay. Yeah, 3325, we'll just, you know, quickly touch up the pads a bit. Prime them with new solder. And uh, clean our tip. You always clean that tip. You don't want any burned flux and slag showing up in your work. All right. 2225. We've got a whole rack of them right here. So, open this guy up. Yeah, I'm going to check my parts bin. I bet I have something I can. I need two 33, three 3325s. Not two, three of them. So, um, yeah, that's unfortunate. I uh, screwed that up. <coughs> I mean, there's a reason they spec'd what they did, and I am not qualified to make a judgment call on that right now. So, I'm gonna. 
I might have to go back and order more. That's okay. One of the things that I knew from life experience is to not, you want to set the expectations to the customer when you're doing stuff like this. Because, number one, you know, this isn't like, this isn't like bringing your car in to get the oil changed. You know, this is, uh, you know, this is way more complicated. And there's a lot of variables. A lot of things can go very wrong with a job like this, especially with me at the helm. And, but, but in all seriousness, um, you know, th there is no precedent for this. Um, I don't have schematics. I don't even know where the hell I would find them. Um, I was able to get the Pioneer schematics, but I don't have the Panasonic ones. And that's a problem. It really is a problem. So, without schematics, without really any anyone out there doing repairs on these, I have no way of saying, oh yeah, okay, so... When this happens, it's usually this part, because nobody's repairing these. Right now, I'm currently the only game in town, to my knowledge. There was one guy who was repairing these uh, radios, and I don't know how in-depth he was getting with them. I don't know if he was doing CD player repairs or just doing uh, auxiliary jack mods. But he just passed away, literally, like, two weeks ago. <laughs> so... You know, with that, with that uh, level of knowledge gone overnight, and I never actually had a chance to reach out to him. I, I had a name, I just didn't know. All I knew is he wasn't doing Pioneer radios. He was only doing Panasonics. I'm thinking, well, I'm only doing Pioneers. I didn't think I was going to be doing a Panasonic, but here we are. Okay. 25, 22. We got one over here. Now, I want to move all this wire out of the way. I don't want to burn any of it. I've got this uh, little... Ooh, a little tiny 3320... Uh, 3.325. 3.325. Did I buy a 3.325? Or did I not? Well, we'll worry about that next. What are these? I got... Oh, the one microfarad. 50 volt. Okay. So let me do this one here. But if I were to if I were to say all right, which one of these stereos do I like the most in terms of how it's put together? Um, it's kind of a toss-up. I mean, the from a, a manufacturing standpoint, this Pioneer, I think, is superior to... I'm not the Pioneer, I'm sorry. The, um, this Panasonic is superior to the Pioneer in terms of just plain efficiency and design. I mean... The whole thing is held together with like three screws and there are no wires. Oh, well, there's, there's this wire here, but there, for the most part, there's no, there's, there's very few flex circuits. Um, everything is just kind of plugged together and it just seems like a very efficient, easy to manufacture piece of equipment. 
Whereas the Pioneer relies heavily on a lot of flex circuits and jumper cables and um, a lot of screws, a lot of screws. And uh, so, yeah, based on that. Doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo. Oh, SMT caps are keyed. So even if you don't know what the stripe means or like in some of these, there is no stripe to indicate the negative side. Now. There's a plastic molded base on these SMTs, and they're actually shaped like a little home plate. And um, that is usually drawn onto the board, so you won't screw that up. Um, hopefully not. Now, one other component that I'd really like to replace is this little backup battery right here. Now, as far as I understand it, this little battery is what holds the, uh, I believe this has an NVRAM type, um, or I'm sorry, a VRAM, a volatile RAM style um, system for storing the security code. And that, I believe, is what this battery is for. This battery should probably be removed. Um, just saying. It probably should be removed just based on that. Uh, the fact that it could someday leak. But, so this is what they call a security code radio. That's what I call it. It's a security code radio. So what it does is it, um, it has a feature where you can set a code to prevent theft or to, to deter theft, it doesn't prevent anything. What happens is, is if somebody were to steal your radio without that little magic code, um, they would be unable to use it, which means they, they would have no reason to steal it because they can't sell it. If you can't sell it, why steal it, right? So, that's what this is. Oh yeah, I'm gonna probably dial back my, um, while I'm in here, I adjusted the laser power a tad. I'm going to put it back where I found it. Okay. So anyway, um, what happens is you get to set the code. Uh, see, some of these have a code built in. You know, you can't choose the code. It's already there for you. This one, you can set it and forget it. Okay. So what happens is if somebody steals a stereo... It's asking for like a four digit code, like a little password. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, on a stereo like this one, you gotta think, this is in the 90s and they weren't really, I mean, they had ideas, but they weren't as malicious as they are today. They probably stored it in a little bit of RAM that has to be powered up, meaning it's volatile, so volatile RAM, and that's where the code is stored, right? So when you when you pull the power from the stereo by pulling it out of the car, and you repower it up, it says, oh my god, oh my god, what's the magic word? Uh-uh-uh. Well, when this radio was new, that little battery kept the RAM powered up for God knows how long. It probably actually also functioned to keep the clock going, which is kind of nice. So it probably stored all of your um, your radio station preferences and things. Wouldn't that be something? Anyway, so that little battery would have powered up the RAM maybe for probably a couple days, maybe a week, maybe a month. It's really hard to say. Um, but uh, now that the radio is old, that battery probably doesn't work anymore. And uh, what I'm going to do, since we're here, I am going to probably order another one. I'm going to just do it. I, I think that's what the guy would want. That's, you know, what would Jesus do, right? I'm, I think Jesus would fix it. I think he would. I, I just have a hunch that if, uh, yeah, I, I think we're going to fix that. I, I really don't like the notion of leaving it there 
because I know damn well that it's going to cause problems, you know, down the road. Um, but those are those are expensive. I've I've priced them out before for other projects, and they are not cheap. Let's just see what it costs. We'll go from there. We'll see what it's going to take. And if it's too much, I'm just going to not do it. But if it's reasonable. So what the, the benefit of that is, I mean, number one, if he changes his um, his car battery, it'll probably hold the radio settings for a good, a good length of time. And who wouldn't want that? I know I would. If it were my car, that's it. If, it. if it were my car, I'd want that. I'd want that function back. God, this thing is like assembling a tavern puzzle. Honest to God. But I did say that I liked the way it was built. But it's it, the, the only problem with it is it's impossible to, to fix, to diagnose. You know, when you're trying to work on this thing, it's like pulling teeth. I can't power this thing up partially assembled. I have to fully assemble it. It's ridiculous. All right. We're at a point where we can uh, we can light the fires and kick the tires. So let's um, hook up our ground wire. Don't want to forget the, uh, the old ground wire. If it works, I'm going to leave well enough alone. I really, I'm going to leave well enough alone. And we're going to just proceed to trying to get the cassette deck working. If it doesn't work, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna give up. I'm gonna replace those remaining uh, caps, and uh, hopefully I can get them. And we'll uh, we'll proceed. Here we go. You got fire. Now the CD player is not active, so it's not gonna light up. So we're gonna put a CD in there. We've already fixed some broken connections, and the back and the main harness connector was it was all busted up. So that was a problem, and now we've got this. Oh, not any worse. Hey! Look at that, huh? Am I good or what? Well, it's playing. All right, so I'm pretty confident that this fix is a fix and not just a fluke. Um, I've been playing this CD for quite a while, and well, not a long time, but enough to know that it works. Um, I've cycled through the tracks a few times. It's going great. And this thing sounds... I'm, I'm impressed. I actually kind of want one of these for my car. <laughs> this thing sounds fantastic. Um, not that my Pioneer doesn't, but this sounds really good. I, I like the sound it puts out. Um, it's a, much, a little bit clearer, I think, than the Pioneer. But um, this is a... I'd say this is a better sounding stereo for sure. Um, now... The only other issue that we have to really fix... Now, we've got some bad lamps. Maybe one or two bulbs out over here. We can replace those. Um, I'm assuming they're the same basic lamp that they used in the Pioneers. But uh, this thing runs great. It really does. I am impressed. I am really impressed. Um, and I'm not going to go nuts and replace any additional caps. I, I think we're good. Um, it's running as it should, and I, I want to get this thing back into the owner's hands as soon as I can, so. And we're really pretty much charging him, I think, a flat fee anyway. It's not like he's getting any, he's not getting what he paid for, because he is. <laughs> he will be. Um, I still have to write up a bill for this thing. I don't even know what I'm going to charge him. I'm going to try to be as reasonable as I can, because, again, you know. I want to be. Um, I want to. I want to serve two purposes. I want to keep these radios going because it really breaks my heart every time I go to a car show and I see a. You know, think about it like a, a Nissan 300ZX or a 280ZX or a, you know, a, a 1950s, 60s, 70s, whatever. And I see. What do I see in the dash? This is what I see. I see one of these, right? Ah, or I see um, one of these which is what was in my car you know i don't want to see that i want to see um i want to see original stereos i want to be i want to go to car shows and i want to see this is for my own selfish pleasure i want to see original stereos in vintage cars i don't want to see those anymore or those 
I don't want to see it. And if I can help the community in any way to keep these radios going. And so anyway, from a historical standpoint, I mean, these were kind of groundbreaking because, I mean, let's face it, CD players were not standard equipment until the 2000s. And even then, um, you know, so to have a to have a built-in CD player in a 1990 Miata was um, it was incredible, and you know it was definitely a luxury. So that's why these are kind of nice to have because they are a historical uh, significant piece. And let's just face it, this thing sounds really good. I'm impressed. I wasn't. I, I figured it was going to sound flat and tinny, and no, no, not at all, not at all. This is the wrong cover, isn't it? Oh, wait. It's the right cover, but it's the wrong box. We're not actually done in that one. I didn't mean to put those screws back. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mama. I didn't mean to put the screws back. All right. There we go. February 1990. We'll clean the faceplate. I love it. I don't have to refinish this stupid thing. <laughs> All right. So one C O one is the C D player mech and the so they were so these were sold. Um if you bought the entry level model, you got this. Okay? You got you got this. And if you sprang for the um the C D player option, you got the whole meal deal. So what they would do is they would give you they had two different uh, tombstone Actually, no, I think there was a compartment underneath the stereo if you didn't have the CD player, above or below it. And so if you didn't have the CD player option, there was like a little blank compartment for, you know, storing cassettes or something. Um, but if you sprang for the CD, then you got, you got all the, you got all the bells and whistles, but no storage compartment. So I found that there's a blown bulb in this faceplate it was the one uh it's actually the one in this region here and we're going to try to change that out in this video the cassette deck you know it's funny it's mechanically it's solid i i don't understand what the problem is um but it's not pulling power or if it is it's it's i don't know i gotta take a good look at it it could be mechanically jammed it's always a possibility. Uh, it's hard to say at this point. Oh, why is that a different size? Whose decision was that? Crank that off. I would like to finish a stereo soon, one of these two, and then I can send it back and collect payment to fund my hobbies. But, you know. The other one, I just, um, I need to do the decals. I could probably do the decals today. I'd like to get it done. I got other things I want to get done too. But yeah, I'm going to have to come up with a, a price structure. Now that I know how to fix some of the more common problems that I've come across, um, so we've got we've got a bulb. We've got to look at the back of the board. There should be an obvious place where there's a lamp. It's not obvious. So we're gonna have to um, we're gonna have to go investigate. I'm gonna warm up my iron. I've got the bulbs already in stock. I bought like 200 of them, so I have enough of those to get the job done. And we're gonna take this apart. We're gonna change that little burned bulb. So let's see what do this. I, I like how the Pioneer tells you 
here, here's a comparison. Here's a faceplate board for a Pioneer. And not only does it tell you, like everything is labeled. So this conduct, this connector here, every, every pin is labeled. Every voltage point is labeled. Um, Panasonic didn't do that. And one of the things that I really don't like is these pins. They're very easy to bend. So if you take one of these apart, do be careful. Um, be very careful because, I mean, there's always ways around broken pins. There's always ways to fix that. But I would rather spend my time doing other things than that. So you want to really, you know, proceed with caution. And the way this is snapped together makes me really nervous. This is old plastic. It's brittle. It's not new anymore. So you want to be very careful. And I don't have a spare. These radios, as I was saying, they're, they're actually quite popular um, in enthusiast groups because they, they are the OG radio. This is the original Miata uh, high-end stereo. Before there was... Before there was a Pioneer, this was the high end. So before they offered the body sonic system and all that happy jazz, this was the top tier stereo for the Miata, which is why they're so coveted, um, working or not. But So we've got one, one blown bulb and it's this guy here. That I know for sure. These little bulb condoms come off, you wanna reuse those. Yeah, there we go. And look at that. It's the exact same bulb that I have with the Pioneer. So we will change that one out. Should probably do them all, but I'm only going to do the one. Um, and I think we got plenty of lighting on the display. So those, these are the end bulbs for those. Those are easy to do. Um, and I'm going to clean the screen up as best I can. But yeah, I'm seeing a common theme here with Miata stereos, and it's because of the fact that it's a convertible. The screens, they lose that uh, that coating, and you know it's it's not good. People clean them wrong; they use the wrong stuff, and once you lose that coating, it's done. So we can clean it with alcohol. Yeah, but yeah, it looks looks okay. It's not great, but it looks all right. Um, yeah, that's definitely the one that's blown. So I'm going to desolder it from the back. I have my temperature up sky high. I don't need it up that high. I generally solder at 600 degrees for leaded solder. Um, it's a temperature that I found works pretty well for me. Um, let me get my... Uh, got a little box of bulbs here somewhere. Already opened up. There's my desoldering grid. Just double check what I'm doing. Yep, yeah, these two. A lot of this work, you know, anyone can do. It's just, I mean, especially me. Look at me. I mean, I, I'm no professional. Um, I just play one on YouTube. But no, seriously, anyone can do this. Even, yeah, it's not that difficult. Now, I'm not using LEDs. Now, all right, there's going to be some people that are asking about LEDs. What about LEDs? LEDs, LEDs. Why, 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 why not LEDs? Um, LEDs are fine. You can do LEDs. I'm not going to do LEDs. And I'll tell you why. Because LEDs produce an intense light that is not what the manufacturer had in mind. I like to keep things looking original. And LEDs, they're not. Now, there's another thing you want to consider, too. 
It depends on how the lighting circuit's designed. So there could be other systems further down the pipe that require a certain amount of resistance on these bulbs. I don't think that's the case. I really don't. I think it's just this straight power going through them. Um, and they're wired, I believe, in series. So, no, I'm sorry. They're they're wired in parallel because uh, if they were wired in series, if one if one lamp went out, they all go out. So yeah, you can do LEDs. I, I'm just choosing not to. Um, but you've got to. But before you start ripping out incandescents out of things, you've got to look at how it's actually wired because um if you have the wrong amount of resistance on that circuit you can cause some major problems but i i don't believe that's the case i i am in no way saying that i believe that to be true um, not in this instance okay so we've got uh, we've got our new our new lamp and we're gonna we're gonna tack her in and the bulbs that i bought are actually an exact replacement for these um they're not an exact replacement for the pioneers i just want to point that out the pioneers use a slightly different bulb i don't have those bulbs i have these funnily enough ooh, ooh, that's gonna leave a mark soldering burns by the way are a rite of passage um Okay, so that's it for that. We'll shut the iron off. So we should have a, um, put our little bulb condom back on so that they don't procreate, make more bulbs. So the Pioneer, yeah, it uses a slightly different bulb, but these work just fine. Um, so as I was saying, I got the recommendation for these bulbs because of something that, um, what's his name? The one who... Just passed away. Uh, I think his name was Anderson. Um, because of something he wrote up on the Pioneer or the, the Panasonics, and I'm thinking, well, they can't be that much different, right? How how different could they possibly be? Well, a little bit. Look at that. So he should have a fully lit display. And control panel. And that was easy. All right. What? What is? Oh, there we go. Got it in. Okay. Good. 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 Good, 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 good. All right, so I think I'm happy with that. And now, now we got to find out why the frigging cassette deck doesn't work, because that's pissing me off. I, uh, I'm a little upset about that. That cassette deck is going to be the life, or the death of me. It'll be the life of me if it works. Put these screws back in. This guy is going to be happy, I, I, and I want to see him happy. I want to see... I want to see these people be happy because, you know, the Miata is all about fun. It's all about enjoyment. That's what the car is built for. And, uh, you know, if your factory stereo doesn't work, well, it's not very nice. Where is that other screw? It must have got swept on the floor. I'll find it. I'll find it when I have it already shipped out of the building. I didn't put it in the cup. No, I put them on the. I put them on the cloth so I wouldn't lose them. And, well, we saw how that goes. That's all right. That's okay. They're just there for fun. All right. So, unfortunately, this replacement bulb isn't as bright as the remaining. Um, it works, but it doesn't work. <laughs> um yeah it's not really cutting it so those are the bulbs that were recommended to me you know i can only do what i can do but they're all lit there are no lamps out both ends of the display are lit 
Everything is lit. There's really not much else I can do. I don't have a brighter bulb to magically pop in there, so. But what's concerning me right now is I'm not getting anything from the tuner. I don't know if this is the problem that he was reporting to me initially or related to it. Also, it looks like the cassette deck is a mechanical issue, um, which is good because I can fix mechanical issues. Um, it's actually jammed. The loading mechanism is jammed. So, why there's no sound? We're getting audio from the speakers because I can hear the beeping sound from the tuner and all that, but I'm not getting any audio per se. Don't know why that is right now. All right, let's crack this nut. So I'm noticing that this motor is trying to spin. I was able to visualize that. So it's trying to spin and it's not, it's just like, no, kill me now. I'm 32 years old. I got six kids by three baby daddies. Leave me alone. I, I am not playing these games anymore. That's what it's telling me. It's like, no, just, just don't, don't, don't. So, okay, so we already had this end apart. We haven't taken this end apart. This drive motor, which drives a little worm gear, you want to be careful, really careful here, because we could throw something out of alignment or out of time, and that would be devastating. We, we have no documentation on this mechanism. I don't have another mechanism like it. see what we can do. So, this whole thing. The guy doesn't really care if I fix his cassette deck. I just, anytime I have an opportunity to learn about a, another unit, let's just see what it's going to take because somebody is going to want me to fix their cassette deck. Right? It's going to happen. See what we can do. Uh, I'm so nervous. I don't want to throw it out of alignment. Oh God, I don't want to mess it up. Usually, once they're out of time, and I don't have the specs for you know getting everything lined up for reassembly. Yeah, it's probably already out of time anyway because of well the fact that it's jammed beyond belief. Oh what? What now? What? Oh, okay. It's... All right, so we got to take the, um, we got to take that belt off. We got to take these out. Those have already been out. Here we go. There's something I need to know here. What am I doing? What's what's, what's the matter? What's, what's holding up the works? Is there a wire, a spring. Oh, there's a spring. It's always a spring. or is it something else? What am I missing here? Oh, I see. I see what it is. What we gotta do is we gotta take this little board off. rotate the whole thing. Okay, so that's got to come out as an assembly. 
We lift it and we rotate it and it comes out like that. Okay, so let's take a look at all this goody goody gumdrops. You see the motor is trying to do something. You know what I think it happened? You know what I think happened? I'm asking, do you know what I think happened? Because I don't know. Alright, so it's out of uh out of time. Do, 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 do. So the motor is not frozen. Let's just make sure that these work. Hmm. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. All right, we need power. All right, so I'm gonna take some uh, some probes. I want to I want to cycle that motor. Doesn't work anyway, I guess, right? What do we got to lose? I'm gonna crank my voltage down to like two volts. All right. We're gonna we're gonna light it up. Let's see what let's see what this motor can do. Precisely, dick. That's what it can do dick it doesn't do anything um let's raise it to six volts four volts oh i'm looking at the wrong scale let's say this is five volts right there here we go nothing it moved a little bit Did you believe it? The motor's bad. I know, right? The motor is bad. That's what it is. The motor is the problem. How that never happens, right? That just never happens. Oh, wait a second. Oh, ah, 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 so I found the problem. Believe it or not, I found the problem. Okay, I just hit me. I've seen this before. This gear, okay, this little motherfucker is the problem. And this is, okay, yeah. Yeah, what's happening here is this little gear is frozen on this little shaft. Look at that. It's tight. Tight as a drum. Holy shit. It's tight. And here's why. It shrank. Look at that. Look at that. That's what's wrong with it. How about the others? Oh my god, they're all doing the same thing. All of them are. We could take all these gears off, and we're going to we're, we're going to fix this. We're we're fixing this. I found the problem, and I'm going to fix it. Okay. So all of these little gears they've shrunk. It's nylon. Nylon shrinks, and it can crack. So you got to be careful. All right, you guys. This is. We're, we're going to get this going. Okay? I don't care if it's the last thing I ever do on Earth. We're going to fix this stupid thing. But I've never seen it so bad. I've seen this on other cassette decks, but not this bad. This is bad. All of these nylon gears are stuck to the shafts that they ride on. Except for this one. This one's loose. But this cam gear, look at this thing. This cam gear is stuck. They're all stuck. Uh, I gotta find that. But look at this, they're all stuck. And here's how we're gonna fix it. We're gonna drill 
We're going to take these over to the drill press and we're going to one up size those holes. Oh my god. Look at that. Look at that shit. All of these, we're going to drill them out and we're going to. Here I am thinking it's a motor, right? It's never that simple. It's never the motor and it's never lupus. Okay, I just bought this new set of drill bits. Um, so that gives me a lot of sizes to choose from. And we just need to kind of ream out the holes. I gotta get myself a fucking tripod for this fucking phone. All right, here we go. So we gotta find uh, just the right size. We just need to ream the holes out a little bit. All right, here goes nothing. This might give it a little bit too much play, so hopefully we don't fuck it up. Now the correct thing to do would be to um, to use a, um, I believe, a, yeah, I believe the correct term is a brooch, and they use them in clock restoration for broaching out uh, bearings. And um, let's see if this is too too loose. It's a one shot deal. If we did, if we take too much off, it's, it's there's no going back. But it's going to be loose. It's going to be sloppy. It's going to be, you know, it's not going to be great, but that's probably a little too much. Um, so it's going to be a little noisy. How about the other one? Um, the cam. Where's the cam? I found, by the way, I found my little retaining clip. Where did I put the cam? Did I take it with me? I took it with me. But yeah, to have them all locked up like that is just not going to happen. So we've got to, uh, actually it might be perfect size for the cam. Yeah, I took a little bit too much hair off that one. But what I can do is I can just go like this. Just kind of go like this, massage it up and down. Just take a little, take a little material off. Put it back on the, um, yeah, I took way too much material off. So that gear is going to be sloppy seconds, but that's okay. We'll just load it up with grease. I don't think he's going to be using this cassette deck every day either. Yeah, see, look at this. Now, now it moves freely. And, uh, oh yeah, it was on the right way. So, yeah. Oh no, 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 no. Got to take a little more off. All right, so this one I did by hand. I just put the drill bit in a vise. <laughs> I was stupid the first one. I, oh boy. Anyway, so put it in a vise. Now these gears aren't timed, and it looks like it's going to be timed based on the position of this micro switch. Okay. So that's that's a good that's, that is a good thing. Because we don't have to worry about getting things timed perfectly. Um, because it's timed by... The, it, it's... Uh, how can I put this? The way it's built... It's a little bit simpler um, than what I was expecting. So We do want to put a healthy dose of um, PAO grease on this. During reassembly. But this moves now. These move. These two don't. All right. So we can probably clip back, put some of these clips back in place for the cam. Oh yeah, I want to get some grease in it. <clears throat> and we'll just, again, we'll, we'll slather on. The PAO grease is good because it doesn't cause, 
it looks like they used a petroleum based grease initially and the problem with that is um, petroleum grease is what accelerates the degradation of these nylon gears um, you can see what happens is the oil separates out of the grease and it causes it causes shrinkage and PAO grease doesn't have that problem as far as I know I have not seen it have that problem personally um, but you never can tell sometimes so we'll just snap these uh, actually I no I, I'm not gonna no we're, we're gonna leave that alone and uh, this see look at this stuff this is like petroleum based grease this shouldn't be on here <sighs> I don't know I don't know man that's what they used now I'm going to take this one off very carefully. Put your finger on top of that so it doesn't go flying. Okay. Okay, lift it up and out. Now we're going to broach with a drill bit. It's not the right thing to do, but it, see, look, oh my, look, this one's frozen solid. What the hell? What the hell, man? What were they thinking? Well, they clearly were thinking production, right? Production over all else. Oh, it went flying. I know where it went, though. I'll get it. Hold on. Now, the plastic is um, is hard as a rock now. So it's, it's now very brittle. I can tell as I'm cutting into it, it's just... Um, no solid as a rock it should be soft and pliable but no more it is no more i'm gonna grease it up a bit we're giving it a lot of play which is not great not ideal but it's it's what we can do i mean you're talking something that was never meant to be repaired in the first place so it's going to be noisy all right just get that out of your get that out of your system it's going to be noisy as shit but will it work i think it will i do i'm, I'm optimistic like that i really am all righty so how do we do well let's give it the juice and see what shakes loose Why I think we got it. What do you think? You think she'll take us to the prom? Okay. Okay. I think we fixed her. Are we ready, kids? Aye, aye, Captain. All right, let's do it. Okay. Where's my tape? Where's my tape? I just had it here a second ago. There it is. There we go. Oh, it's out of time. Yeah. No, it's not. yeah, it, it's out of time. It, is a timing issue. Right. Now it's jammed. Okay, back apart. That was a symbolic gesture. I figured out what it, what I was doing wrong. Here's the trick: you've got to assemble the deck in the um, with the tape in. So you've got to um, manually engage or the carriage so that the tape is in the dropped position. So there's no tape in there, but you could put a tape in there if you want to. But you want to assemble it with the carriage in the dropped position. Then you can put in your um, 
Let me show you. So it's upside down. Just keep that in mind. It's all upside down right now. And here we go. Listen to that. It runs. Fast forward. Play. Rewind. Play. Stop. Eject. We fixed it. We fixed the CD player. We fixed the cassette deck. I'm on a roll. Okay, so I'm gonna have to cut a lot of footage out for this video to work, um, but we fixed everything that was wrong with the stereo. One of the initial complaints, um, and by the way, yeah, this does work. Um, it's all back together. It's doing good. Hear it? Um, so it's all good. All ready to go. This thing is good to go back in the car. I'm going to be sending it back to the gentleman as soon as he pays me. Um, hopefully, I send him a bill, and um, I have to work out what I'm going to charge him. I, I'm actually into this more in time than materials. The materials expenses were very minimal. Um, you know, really a couple bucks, but a lot of time went into this one. And we've got his cassette deck working, we've got his CD player working, and he did complain that his tuner was an issue, and I suspect there's something else at play. Um, maybe he's got a ham radio enthusiast next door who's not playing by the rules, I don't know. Um, but I am able to get all of my local channels without an antenna. So that tells me that there, there's nothing wrong with the tuner. In fact, I don't think tuners really typically fail. Um, it's just not a thing. Um, really all the issues that, 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 uh, occur in these are what we've addressed. And thankfully he did send me his brackets so I can remount those. But anyway, yeah. Everything's good. Um, this stereo is good to go. And these are a very popular radio, and I hope that a lot of people see this who have these and realize that, yes, yes, they can be fixed. Just a quick uh, recap, <laughs> no pun intended, but replacing the capacitors on the CD mechanism control board, number one has to happen. Um, once you've done that, then you can look at, okay, maybe the laser is losing power, maybe not. You can toy with that adjustment. Um, I reverted it back to what it was, and it works fine. The um, cassette deck, all the nylon gears in the transport position train, um, those are prone to shrinkage, and they literally shrunk onto the steel shafts. So they couldn't turn. We took them out. We reamed out the um, the hubs or the yeah the center center hubs holes and lubricated them with this is what I use synthetic PAO grease. This stuff is great, good for transport mechanisms. Relubricated it and look at that. I mean, I kind of want one of these for my car. Even though I have the better one, I like this. I like I like this thing. It's it's good. Now, if we wanted to, we could change out that uh, little battery. It's a rechargeable battery, or a, it's actually more of a high capacity capacitor. Although it might be a battery, I'm not really sure on this one. But that is to store memory and other things. Uh, we could replace that, but it's not necessary. Um, it's not leaking. I'm not going to mess with it. So. I mean, look, you know, you can't, and there's the thing is, you know, someone might, when I, when I do come up with a price list of what this is going to cost someone to have done if they want me to do it, and they're going to say, well, I'll just go buy another one on eBay. Okay. Okay. So when the one you bought on eBay has the same problem and you've paid more than what you're going to pay me for that one, think about it. Um, your best bet is to learn how to solder. Learn to code. <laughs> learn to code. Yeah, learn how to solder. And you can fix these yourselves. Um, and, you know, I have my entire life, I've been, I've been spending time, you know, learning how to repair things. And this is 
Every little skill I acquire helps, and you can do the same thing. If I can do it, so can you, you know? That's my motto. CD player is working good. Cassette deck is working great. Um, I, hey. But, you know, yeah, you can you can certainly, you know, yeah, it's not worth it. You can you can buy enough. So it's going to be over $100. I'll just, I'll just be blunt. Um, I'm looking at around... Again, I gotta I gotta figure out what my time is worth, but um, it's not gonna be cheap. But again, you could yeah, you can buy one of these on eBay. Yep, and you can you can save some money that way. Sure, sure, sure. Um, but the one you bought on eBay is gonna have the same problem. Yeah, it's unfortunately a lot of the issues that I dealt with here are age related. It's not because somebody abused it. It's not because they wrecked their car or because it. They left the top open and water got in. No, no, no. Everything I've done to this radio today was entirely age-related. So, if you buy another one, it's going to be the same 30, 32 years old. And, uh, yeah. So that's going to conclude this radio. This guy is ready to go back to, back to the customer. This one, we're going to wait for the capacitors to come in so I can restore the correct power levels going to the lighting circuit hopefully that works out um face plates i'm still i'm gonna let them cure a little bit longer before i uh before i start decal work and uh and those are going to get shot with clear coat so that they don't gummy on your fingers all right so i just got finished applying decals to these face plates and i wanted to show that real quick um these are for the uh, for our customer who is having me restore his uh, Pioneer. Now I actually did two sets or one yeah two sets of face plates because uh, one of them is mine. It's just a spare set I have came with one of my radios that I bought for parts. Where's the other one? Oh, it's over here. And I wanted to kind of show you what these look like before the clear coat. Now we can't apply clear coat for a little bit longer. I'm gonna give it about a full seven days since these were painted. Um, I wanna make sure that that paint is fully cured because what you don't wanna have happen is it for, uh, to react with the clear coat and it'll it'll start wrinkling. Um, so the, the name of the game when applying these is you wanna cut as close to the text as you can to a, do this one as an example of what happens when you don't. Now, once these are clear coated with a um, with a matte finish, it should blend the background of the uh, decals in with the clear. At least that's my hope, because it is pretty obvious that these have been decaled. But once they're cleared, they should be okay. And then, uh, you know, um, if you plan on sending me a radio for a restoration project, um, do understand this takes time. And a lot of that time is literally waiting for paint and coatings to fully cure. Um, and we are still waiting for parts. In this case, I discovered it needed um, capacitors. And uh, so I gotta wait for those. So this guy is gonna be waiting about a week or two before he gets his radio back. Uh, it could take a month, um, depending on my workload, really. And this stereo, which is ready to ship off, um, it's. It didn't take long at all. This one just needed some needed capacitors in the CD player mech um, control board. And it needed some finessing in the cassette deck. And now everything works. Works pretty well, actually. I'm, I'm actually very happy with how this came out. Um, it sounds good. And I think that customer is going to be pretty pleased with what uh, what he's getting back. So that's that's my hope, that he's happy with it. Now, in terms of uh, price for doing a Mazda sensory sound system, uh, the Pioneer head unit and Body Sonic, um, that's that's a little pricier. See, that 150 bucks I think is reasonable for my time and my materials. That includes everything, by the way, return shipping and all. These are another story. This takes a lot of my time, my patience, um, and materials. I mean, I I have to sacrifice one of my one of my kits over here in these envelopes i only have a few left and um, i need to i need to make sure that i have enough of those 
for future projects, but um, for a complete decal and paint job, plus the uh, capacitors and the power supply that he needed, plus the uh, the Bluetooth conversion that he requested, um, you know, those modules alone, just the module, by the way, cost me 20 bucks. The modules cost me 20 bucks. One can of clear coat cost me over $30. Um, the decals, those are just the decal kits. My cost, you know, we're looking at around 20 bucks for the decal kits. So there's a lot in the capacitors. We're looking at about 10, 15 bucks in capacitors, depending on how, how serious it needs it. Um, you know, with all of those expenses added on, there's a lot of material costs plus return shipping. You know, this guy is looking at around plus my time, my, you know, I have to take over my whole bench here for one radio, you know, um, we're looking at around, I'm thinking 250 to 275, uh, based on, uh, based on need, um, what else it needs. Now this radio, I actually had to pull apart from one of my part stereos, a part that I'll never see again, uh, because uh, his um, his light diffuser was melted on the body sonic amp. Did I keep it over here on the bench? No, I think I tossed it. But the in oh yeah, yeah, this this part right here was completely melted, so I had to give him one from one of my part stereos. These things happen. So yeah, it's, it's expensive. Like I'm thinking if I were to, if I'm going to offer this service to anybody else, 275 just for the, for all of what I've done to this Pioneer right here, 275 I think is a fair price. And if you, you, know, you and the thing is you can't buy these stereos. You can't, I see broken ones going for $100 just for just a part stereo. And um, if I'm gonna keep this as a sustainable business, for any length of time, I've got to make sure that I'm charging enough to where if I have to buy a part stereo, I can do that. Um, a working unit, um, I've heard I'm going for over a thousand dollars. You know, so it's not it's not a lost cause for somebody who really really wants the factory Pioneer stereo. You know, they're gonna have to pony up because it 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 yeah. It's, it's really that, it's really a lot of work to fix these things up. Is it worth it? Really no, because for $100, you can put in one of these Kenwoods, you know. You can do that for 100 bucks, and you've got, you got Bluetooth. If you want CD, you can get a CD player, you know, but uh, yeah, it's a lot of work. But I think it's worth it. You know, I, I've personally invested over a grand in just materials and um, buying part stereos to, to pull a few boards and stuff out of. And I've got about $1,000 in my own stereo. And uh, a lot of that actually ended up becoming startup costs for this little venture here because I had to pay $444 for those labels. Yes, they were that expensive. Um... You know, I had to spend time designing decals. I had to spend time working with the supplier for the labels and getting them just right and a lot of back and forth. Um, one can of clear coat. I can't believe how expensive that shit is. 30, 30 bucks, I think, is what I pay for that. You know, and you can't, like, put it on the shelf. Once you've activated the can, you got 48 hours. You know, so queue up as much stuff as you can before that can uh, turns into a pumpkin. So... Anyway, that's it for now. Thank you for watching, and uh, I'll, I'll probably do one more video. We'll finish up this guy's uh, Pioneer, and we'll get him, get him on his way. That one's being shipped out hopefully this week. I'm just waiting for payment on that, and he's, uh, he's ecstatic with what uh, with what I've been able to accomplish for him. And uh, I'll just try to keep this going. I am so yes, I am accepting additional radios. I've I've put out feelers. Uh, I think I've got one or two more people that want me to do theirs, and um, we'll see how this one comes out and maybe make some adjustments if we need to. All right, thank you for watching.